Hey friends, welcome back to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangie and I have some unfinished business that I would like to take care of today. About a year ago, somewhere around there, um, I did a video on showing you how you can grow a SCOBY from scratch where you go to the store, you buy some uh, kombucha, you bring it home, make some sweet tea, pour your uh, kombucha into the sweet tea and then leave it alone for a few weeks. And then at the end of a few weeks, you have a SCOBY. And I said at the end of the video that I would show you guys how to brew uh, kombucha for drinking uh, after that, and I never did. So uh, now I, I can do that. <laughs> um, I started growing another SCOBY three weeks ago. It is ready to use. So if you're interested in growing a SCOBY from scratch, I will uh, put that link in the show notes below. So you can, it's not that difficult. I've done it a couple of times and have had great success. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make some tea. Uh, now I prefer to use black tea and no, I do not use organic. This is just black tea from Aldi. Um, some people use different kinds of teas, but I don't know enough about that to share an opinion or any information on that. Just do your research. First thing I'm gonna do, I have a filtered water. I'm going to put a couple of quarts of filtered water in my pot. To my pot of water, I am adding eight black tea bags. So while I'm waiting for my tea to come to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and pour out about a cup or so of starter tea. And then with very, very clean hands, I'm going to reach in, very gently grab my SCOBY and put it in the bowl with the starter tea. And we're gonna set that aside. Now I know a lot of people will use the starter tea that's very vinegary as a vinegar, as a hair rinse. For other things, I don't. I just go ahead and pour it out and wash my jug. I just want to show that um, I just turned this off. The tea bags have come to a boil. So I'm going to remove this from the heat and I'm going to let this hang out for just a little bit. While it's still warm, I'm going to add my one cup of sugar um, and I'm adding it to that so it will dissolve. Now I take out my tea bags and set them aside because I put them back in at the end to make it for a stronger tea. But I take those out, I add my one cup of sugar and I'm using regular white sugar. I also sometimes will use um, cane sugar, pure cane sugar. Um, just do your research and see what you like best. And here I'm just putting the tea bags back in. Okay, so this has been hanging out for about half an hour. Um, it's definitely not cool, I can still see a little bit of steam coming off of this, but what I am gonna go ahead and do is I am gonna go ahead and put it in um, the pitcher that I used to ferment in. It's just a gallon sized ball mason jar. I got it from Walmart last year. Um, it was like, like $14 or something. Um, but anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the contents in there. I think it'll help cool it faster. So we're gonna go ahead and pour the tea into there. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and put some cold water in it, some cold filtered water, um, just to kind of help bring the temperature down faster. Um, I put my tea in the jug and then I put two quarts of uh, cold filtered water and it's like perfect. It's not hot at all. I have very clean hands. I'm going to pour my uh, starter tea into my fresh tea and you wanna make sure that you have at least a cup. Um, and I'm just gonna hold the SCOBY back so it doesn't fall in. I'm going to very gently put in my SCOBY. It's beautiful. And I'm just gonna drop it down in there. Now this SCOBY may fall to the bottom. It may rise to the top. It may just hang out uh, in the middle. It's fine. Um, we're gonna let that hang out for a couple of days. And then when we come back, uh, I'm gonna taste it and see if it's ready for my second ferment or um, if I need to let it hang out for a little bit longer. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna cover this and I'm gonna set it in a dark spot. And then when we come back, we'll give it a taste test. Hey guys, it has been five days since I started brewing my kombucha. I just tasted it. It's still not ready. 
It's getting close though. But I wanted to show you got another SCOBY forming. This one kind of sank to the bottom a little bit and now it's just kind of hovering in place. Yeah. In the meantime, we're growing another SCOBY. Pretty cool. Good morning, my friends. We are on day seven. It has been exactly one week since we started this process and we are finally ready for the second fermentation. Now in the summer, it only takes a few days for the kombucha to get to where I like it to start the second fermentation. But because it's cooler in our house, because it's winter, um, it takes a little bit longer. Um, I've got coffee going in the back, sorry about that. So this is what I'm gonna be using to flavor our kombucha. Again, this is something that's gonna take uh, time to figure out what you like. We've tried all different kind of flavors and mango seems to be the family favorite. I get the naked juice because it's just juice. There's no added sugar. Um, and there's there are blends of five other juices, but there's no sugar added. There's nothing weird. It's mango puree, apple juice, orange juice, banana puree, lemon juice, natural flavors, and beta carotene. And that's what we like. So let's talk about containers really quick. This is what I use. This is a, I think this is a 10 ounce jelly jar maybe. And I use these plastic lids. Is it the best thing to use? No, it's not. But this is a good serving size. Um, and the problem with this lid is it's not airtight. So it's not that great about keeping the carbonation in. I mean, it keeps some in, but it's definitely not as carbonated as it could be. But that's what I'm using for now until I can afford to do something better. The most ideal container and ones that I hope to invest in in the very near future are these flip top bottles. They are specially designed to hold in carbonation. You just have to make sure that if you're not drinking them regularly that you do open them occasionally to let any of the carbonation build up out or it will bust your bottles. These will run you about two bucks a piece or so um, and I will leave an affiliate link for you in the description box below. Get this next part of the process going. I'm going to start by putting a fourth of a cup of the naked juice in each jar. And this is just how we prefer to flavor it. Um, I got this idea from Daddy Curbs, um, but I also have known of people to use fruit, fresh, frozen, um, dehydrated, and there are some purists who just love the kombucha as is unflavored. Before I start bottling the kombucha, I want to go ahead and set aside my one cup of starter tea and go ahead and take out the scobies. Remember, very, very clean hands. Um, and I'm going to save both of them. So I'm just taking them out, I'm putting them in the bowl with the starter tea, and then I'm going to start bottling the kombucha. Now, one thing that I notice is that there is a lot of yeast floating around in the liquid and I really don't want that in my second ferment it will carbonate just fine without it so I'm just going to use a little mini strainer and I put that over my funnel um, and I pour the kombucha through the funnel through the strainer and the funnel into the jars sorry about this angle guys I didn't do a very good job picking a, a spot for the camera um, but I did want to also tell you that I did leave about an inch headspace I don't really think it's a good idea to fill your jar all the way to the top just because of all of the carbonation action. Um, just seems like you would have some issues there. When it was all said and done, I had 10 8 ounce jars of kombucha for second fermentation. Here I'm pouring the starter tea uh, back into the jar along with the scobies and then the process starts all over again. You make your tea, add your sugar, let it cool, add your water and let it sit until it's time for your second fermentation. Now I'm adding the lids, and like I said before, these are not the greatest when it comes to holding in carbonation, so I do try to put those suckers on as tight as possible. Once I get the lids on, I slide them back into my fermentation cubby, and I let them hang out for 24 hours. Some people let them go longer, but we like it after 24 hours. Okay, my friends, these are ready to go into the refrigerator. Um, sure, they could hang out longer, they could get more carbonated. Honestly, we've already drank four of them. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the fridge. 
Um, but yeah, my kids love it. I love it. My husband loves it. Um, but yeah, so give us a try. Just remember to be patient, to give yourself some grace. This is a science, a science experiment that you can drink. So there's gonna be a lot of experimenting, seeing what you like, how tangy do you like it, how carbonated do you like it, what flavors do you like, but it's fun. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, I will do my very best to answer them. I don't consider myself a, an expert by any means, but this is something that my family and I enjoy. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Until next time.